Um, and uh, today we are hosting the online Pommern Connection session together with the Pommerscher Greif, Germany's leading society for Pomeranian research. And we are hosting this session together with the United Nations of Genealogy, the International German Genealogy Partnership, IGGP. And some board members of the IGGP are here with us today. And um, I, I will say to today we are all our big family searching for information about our Pomeranian roots. So welcome everybody to our family reunion today. And the most important word for today is connection. To connect to other researchers and members of the Pommerscher Greif to find more information about our Pomeranian family history. And um, I will, this is the agenda for today. And uh, now I want to give you some um, technical information. Um, move, now move. Please mute your, move. Please, uh, mute your microphone during the presentations. You can unmute your microphone by yourself by clicking on this mute and unmute button. Um, and um, if you like, to um, ask um, or to comment something or to share information, then it's uh, very welcome. Uh, then you can um, unmute your microphone. And if you like, you can turn on your camera because it would be wonderful to see every one of our big family today face to face. That would be nice if you can, would decide to turn on your camera. Um, you cannot successfully connect to others uh, to find important information if you don't know who is here in this meeting today. So please do us a favor and open the participants list to check who is with us. This is a button for the participants list. So open the participants list. Uh, maybe you know somebody that, um, who is participating today and you want to connect. And um, Then um, when you want to speak, you can do it uh, by microphone or you can virtually raise your hand by clicking a button located in the bottom frame of um, the participants list here um, in this German version of my um, uh, Mac. Um, it, it says Hand erheben, so raise your hand. I don't know, maybe you have another little um, description there. So uh, if when you open the participants list here, you can um, raise your hand virtually and, um, and Nancy will call you. Um, so please wait um, that somebody calls you, then you can um, ask or share information and whatever. So open the chat, please. This is a chat button and this is a chat box. So open the chat please and type in where you're from. Type in two or three family names of your ancestors and uh, the names of the towns or villages where they came from in Pomerania. So make it visible for all participants. That's very important because maybe others are searching for the same name in the same region. And maybe there's a new unknown cousin of yours here in this meeting so everything can be possible. So um, use the chat to um, introduce yourself and um, the ancestors you are searching for. And please use the chat to ask, help and share information. Fill the chat with questions, information and links to useful websites to help and to connect with others. And you can save the chat anytime to your computer by clicking uh, on the square, and this is a chat box here, and here's a little square uh, with three dots in it. And if you click on this little uh, square, um, you will ha have a uh, save function so that you can save the chat on your computer. That's important because maybe there are many interesting links um, in this chat and other information you will need later, please. So before you leave, um, the, uh, the connection session, save the chat. And um, one more thing, so the next online uh, connection session uh, will be the Schleswig-Holstein connection session on 
Saturday, January the 30th um, next year, then at 7 p.m. CET, the same time like today, 19 Uhr Middle Europäische Zeit. It's um, again, it's in English for all genealogists worldwide with ancestors from the Schleswig Holstein area. And it will be organized by Klaus Kort, who is in this um, connection, uh, um, online Pomant connection session too. So um, then, um, yeah. So um, after the session, we want to invite you to our virtual connection cafe. That means this Zoom, this Zoom meeting room will remain open for further talks, questions, discussion, and connection with an open end. So uh, stay a while and maybe then uh, when this connection session um, ends, uh, so you are invited to stay and get yourself a tea, coffee, snack, your lunch or dinner and enjoy the time together that we will have. And uh, now I want to give the word to the president of the International German Genealogy Partnership and I will stop the screen sharing now so that we can see Ingeborg Carpenter from Sacramento, California. Hello. Hello, Georg. Georg. Ja, vielen Dank. Ich freue mich, heute wieder dabei zu sein. Uh, mal sehen, einmal auf Deutsch, einmal auf Englisch. Uh, I will start with the English first. And uh, actually, no, I think I will start in German, since we are going to Germany. So, guten Morgen aus Kalifornien. Hier ist 10 Uhr morgens. Guten Abend nach Deutschland. Wie du sagtest, mein Name ist Ingeborg Carpenter. Und... Uh, ich freue mich, Sie ganz herzlich hier begrüßen zu dürfen. So eine Connection Session, so ein Zusammenkommen gleichgesinnter Familienforscher, wo man sich treffen und aus austauschen kann, liegt mir immer sehr am Herzen und ist ein ganz wichtiger Grund, dass unsere Partnerschaft überhaupt zustande kam. Deshalb freue ich mich so sehr, heute wieder den Pommerschen Greif begrüßen zu dürfen. Die International German Genealogy Partnerschaft ist wirklich sehr dankbar, so einen aktiven Verein wie den Greif als Partner zu haben, der wirklich keine Mühe scheut und immer bereit ist, seine Erfahrungen und seine Erforschtes zu teilen und vor allen Dingen zugänglich zu machen. Ich bedanke mich bei Dr. Kort und Herrn Palmüller vom An äh, Forscherstammtisch Unna, dass sie dieses Treffen möglich machen. Und natürlich freue ich mich, dass Herr Beiersdorf hier ist und diesen Vortrag hält. Ich bedanke mich bei ihm. Aber das Beste ist natürlich nach dem Vortrag, wenn wir uns wirklich, wenn auch nur virtuell, treffen können. Also vielen Dank. Und da morgen schon der vierte Advent ist, äh, frohe Weihnachten. Und jetzt auf Englisch. Good morning, I'm from California, 10 a.m. here. And uh, by looking at the name list, I can see all the usual suspects are present. Um, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this connection session. And uh, such a session, such a meeting of like-minded genealogists where you can meet and exchange ideas is very, always very important to me and it's a very big reason that our partnership came about. And once again, I'm able to welcome you to a session by the Pommerscher Greif and Ahnenforscher Stammtisch Unna. The uh, IGTP is grateful to have such active partners that through their tremendous and selfless work, aid us all in our own family research, especially in difficult areas like Pommern and the eastern reaches of the old Preussen. So thank you very much, Dr. Kort and uh, Mr. Palmüller for organizing it. <clears throat> and for thank you, Mr. Beiersdorf for showing us how to use the website. Most of all though, I appreciate the opportunity to truly connect with all our visitors after the presentations, because that's what the IGGP is all about. What a wonderful Christmas present. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ingeborg, for your words. And now I want um, to call Dr. Klaus Kort from the Pommerscher Greif. Klaus, are you ready to start the session? Yes, thank you. Uh, I am ready, uh, although my part today is the easy one. 
Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we're very happy to have you back for the second time uh, for Pomerania Connection session. Uh, it shows that there is interest and demand for this kind of activity, and we're already working on preparing the third session in the new year, which we will tell you about at the end of today. Um, as I said, I have the easy part today because it's my great pleasure to delegate the work to Danilo, Danilo Beiersdorf uh, from the Pommersche Greif. He may not have the answer to all of your questions, but he definitely knows how to find the answers because he's the one that programmed our two databases the, that he will show us late now, uh, the Quellensuche and the Greif Index. So uh, watch out and uh, afterwards we will hopefully be able to uh, solve some of your questions as well. So have a good evening. Thank you very much, Klaus. So I will start the screen sharing. So I hope everybody see the first slide. Uh, it's okay, Danilo. Uh, so one moment. Okay. So thank you very much, Klaus. Uh, good morning or good evening to everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to speak uh, in our second uh, uh, online connection session. In our first session, Klaus uh, spoke about family research in Pomerania in general. And our topic today will be the databases of the Pomerania Greif, which can help you in your family research. Uh, we have more than these two uh, databases, and today we want to uh, show the Quellensuche. This is so, well, it's a source database, and the Greif Index, it's a person database. So I divided my speak into two parts, which ends uh, with practical examples, which we extracted uh, from your questions we received uh, before this meeting here. So, but first, I want to introduce myself. I was born 19. 81 in Greifswald, it's uh, in North Germany. Uh, I'm married, I have one daughter, nine years old, and one son, which is uh, two years old. I'm a mechanical engineer in the fusion research, and I do family research since uh, 2013. Uh, two years later, I became a member of the Pommerscher Greif, and uh, since 2017, I'm the contact person for the district or the county of Franzburg. Contact person means everybody can send me emails or ask if he has ancestors in this area. Uh, since last year, I am the board member of the Pommerscher Greif. So on the next slide, you see why I am member of the Pommerscher Greif. The first four generations of my family are from Pomerania. Um, so later, in later generations, I have some ancestors from East Prussia and Poznan. And at the moment, uh, the oldest ancestor is Gottfried Grimm, uh, who lived in Wietstock, which is in the county of Anklam. So that's my introduction. I think we can start with the part number one, the so-called Quellensuche, a source database. So I will start with the questions, why do we need such a source database? So there are many challenges uh, if you do research in Pomerania. We have a special historic uh, situation. You know, Pomerania here is, one moment, laser pointer. Pomerania was divided after the second world war into two parts, Western Pomerania here, which is today in Germany and Eastern Pomerania, which is today in Poland. You see here the border. Before 1945, Pomerania was divided in three uh, government districts, the government district of Stralsund, Stettin, and Köslin. And we have almost 40 different counties here, like Stolp, Belgard, Stettin, Greifenhagen. In this area, we have more than 800 civil registry offices and more than 1,100 parishes or churches which are connected to a mother church. So, and we have a lot of losses or destructions during the World War II, especially in areas like Greifenhagen, which is the main route for the Red Army uh, to Berlin. So, due to these facts, 
the church books and the civil registry office documents are scattered uh, today in different archives. So on the next slide, I will see, uh, I will show some, some of them. So we have the provincial parish archive in Greifswald, where you can find some church books from East Pomerania. We have uh, local Polish civil registries. We have local German uh, civil registries. We have the micro, uh, microfilms from fa Family Search. We have local parish archives in Germany and in Poland. We have city archives. We have the big archive in Berlin where you can find church books. Uh, we have the provincial archive Greifswald, uh, the Landesarchiv Greifswald, where you can find duplicates of the church books and so on and so on, very scattered. So uh, at the moment in our database, there are 197 different archives where you can find church books and civil registry documents from Pomerania. So it's a very special situation. <clears throat> In addition, more and more archives uh, put these uh, church books or registry documents into the internet. So you all know this site here, which is the main site of the Polish archives. Then we have some special websites from the archive in Köslin, from Stettin. Um, we have uh, some uh, websites, Family Search, Ancestry, and Archeon. So, on the on, uh, one hand, it's a very positive situation for the family researcher, but on the other, it also uh, presents challenges uh, because before we start with our database, there was no general overview where you can find uh, the church books and the civil registry documents. So. In 2060 and 17, I think we developed the so-called Quellensuche, and it's online since September 2017. So, this is the first introduction, and I think we should start uh, with the first practical examples. So, one question from Eric Kopitke. I think he's there. I saw him. Uh, he is asking um, that he his grandfather was born at Schwartow, and uh, he wants to know if the records from the state archive in Gdansk uh, have been digitized and made available online. So I think it's a good first example uh, to get an overview about the Quellensuche. So let's start with an example. So one moment. Bup, 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 bup. So you can find the Quellensuche as a source database on our website. So this is the main site. So first, it is possible to translate the site. On the left menu, you find a Google Translator. And if you choose here your language, English, for example, it's an automatic uh, translation, but it helps. So our Quellensuche, you find here in Research. And then on the left side, source search. So first information on the top, you can find a PDF file uh, with an uh, user guide in English language. So, and now let's start. Uh, the Quellensuche is very simple. We have one search field. And if you want to search for an, uh, place in Pommern, you type in here, Schwarto. that's a question from, uh, question from Eric. So, and then we have here the search results. There are uh, three different places uh, called Schwarto in Pommern, in Pomerania. So, and he's looking for the uh, Schwarto in, uh, I think, I don't really know, in Lauenburg. So, if you click then on Schwarto, district of Lauenburg. Then there is an overview page, an overview page for the place Schwarto. Uh, on the top of this uh, website, you find first information 
about this place, the place name, the district, it's District Lauenburg, and uh, the civil registry, the Protestant church, and so on and so on later. Then we see a map, it's a Google map where you can see where this place is. And then uh, we have here the information about the civil registry. So uh, in 1932, Schwarto has his own uh, civil registry. And you see that the documents of this civil registry uh, are online. Here you can find the times. Here's some more information, the link to the digitized uh, documents and the location of the original source. So you see the documents are online to 96. And here you see that the uh, younger documents are in the registry office of Schwarto. So, and on point four, you see that there are some microfilms at Family Search. That's the information for the civil registry of Schwarto. The next point, we have information about the uh, church books. So, uh, Schwarto has his own uh, Protest uh, Protestant parish. And you see here the information that the church books are lost or de destroyed during the World War II. But there is a reformed a Protestant church in Schwarto, so which are following here. And you see that these church books are online. So Eric asked if these documents are online uh, nowadays. And I can say, okay, they, they are online and you can have a look at them at this resource here. It's called Metriki Gen Baza. And if you log in into this service, we can see um, that the church books of Swato are online. So I'll take one example. I'll click on this picture here and some seconds later, you have to you, you can look into the church book. So this is a way how the Quellensuche can help you. So I will repeat this. You start here on the start page of our Quellensuche, type in the place you are looking for, then you got a result list. There you can choose your place. And on this place site, place overview site, you find, uh, you find all the information about church books, civil registry documents, and so on. So that's my first example I want to show. So I have to switch. So there was a question of Joy Curtin. Uh, she is looking for some uh, places in the district of Greifenberg. So, and, and she's looking for the church in Robe and ask if there are more than the two microfilms from Family Search. So, I will show how to look at this. So, we start at the start page, type in. Oh, sorry, Robe. And you see it here, we have three different possibilities. We can search up to place, parish and registry office. So, and she asked if there are more than these two microfilms of the church box. So I choose parish Then we see, okay, okay Robe, district of Greifenberg. And if I click here, we got an overview about the resources of uh, this church book and we see, okay, <clears throat> there are only these two microfilms of this church book. Um, and we have here the link to family search. And if you click on that, we land in direct in the church books and you can start with family research. So if we look at the end of the table, 
there is a list of finding aids. So additional information that there are name indexes of this church book. So these name indexes are created by members of the Pommershoek Rife. And if you click on these links, There is a PDF file and you can find here a name index of the uh, church book of these, uh, uh, of the Church of Vogel. So this means all informations we found or our members created are linked to this uh, Quellensuche. So it's a central uh, place where you can find information about church books and civil registry documents and the finding aids we created. So, and keep that in mind, here is an uh, additional hint. Um, the church books are indexed and in the Grife database. So keep that in mind, we will come to this later on. So, and there was, Another question. Question of Harald Zeland. He asked, um, sorry, oh, he's looking for people who are researching in this, uh, in a special area. And uh, there are two places and I will start with Albinshof. So if you want to see if anybody is researching in this area, so we can use the Quellensuche too. So put on Albinshof search. You see here, there is a place called Albinshof in the district of Anklam. And if you click on that, we see the overview. But at the end of this information about church books and civil registry documents, there is a hint uh, to contact persons. So in our association for every Pomeranian district, there is a contact person. Uh, so for the district of Anklam, it's Angela Schmilewski. And uh, if you have questions to this district, you can write an email to Angela and ask uh, her if she anybody knows who's researching in this region, or maybe if she has more information about these uh, places uh, Harold asked for. So this is uh, our Quellensuche. So it's very easy. You have to type here a place name and search after it, and then you uh, have an overview where all family research documents are listed, linked, and uh, you are very fast, or it's very fast possible to go to church books, digitized church books, and so on. So that's uh, our Quellensuche, and this part number one ends here. And I think if we have some, some questions, we can uh, do it now, I think. Annette, did you want to ask a question? Yes, I've got some background noise. Um, the question oh. I have is, when do you use the phonetic search? How would you use that? And then also, when you do your search options, do you have an asterisk or a question mark that you might use if you don't have all the letters? Because sometimes in documents, you don't have everything. Yeah, that's right. Um, we have some placeholders here. We see it here. Uh, if you use this sign here, uh, this re uh, represents zero, one or more characters. So, or you use this sign here, it's the under underscore character, uh, represents exactly one character as a specific position. So you are able to use these wildcards here. The phonetic search is an option, you can use it. It's a, it's a Kölner phone uh, phon uh, uh, phonetic search. It's optimized for the German language. So, and maybe sometimes it's very helpful because in old documents, there are uh, some different ways of writing uh, plays. So uh, this is helpful, very, it can be very helpful, yes. <clears throat> very often in Pomerania, we have author called Klein or Groß. So, and uh, if you're looking for this, uh, places you can use this uh, uh, person sign 
for a placeholder and uh, use it. So, and you get a list of all DAPs in Pomerania. So. so if anybody has a question about the uh, source search, feel free to unmute yourself. So there's not another possibility uh, to see church books or civil registry documents uh, here at the end of the page. Uh, it's uh, church books online, church uh, books total, register office online and register office total. So if you click uh, on these links, you get a list of all online uh, church books at a special district of Pomerania. So here in this example, it's the district of Anklam and you have here a list of all online church books. And uh, yeah, it's another possibility for looking after church books and civil registry documents. So if there aren't no questions, I will switch to my, sorry, 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 sorry. Where is my presentation? Yeah. No. Or part two, the Grive X, the person database. So why do we have this person database. In 2014, 2015, there was a big project of digitization of church books and civil registry documents in the Polish State Archive of Köslin and Stolp. And our uh, association were asked uh, if we can help uh, at this uh, project. So our members are asked to index these church, uh, church books. So during this project, hundreds of thousand data sets were created. So name indexes uh, in different Excel, Excel files. And uh, yeah, we got a big list of, of files and, and documents uh, from this digitization, uh, digitization project. Additionally, uh, we had uh, many different name indexes on, your, uh, web, uh, on our website in different formats and shapes and an increasing number of name indexes which are scattered in the internet on different websites in social media and forums uh, everything outside our association so and if you look for people in pomerania the searchability is very limited so you have to look in many different documents uh, to get information so, and there was no central overview of these index documents. So in 2017, uh, we started with the Grive X and uh, yeah, our main goals are that this database is a central archiving point for index work in Pomerania. And we want to have an overview about the index church records and civil registry documents because we want to prevent double work. So, and uh, we want that this database is free accessible. So at the moment, we have more than 1.3 million uh, name index records, which correspond, uh, corresponds to around about 3.7 million individuals. So, and you see here the amount of the different events. So more than 500,000 civil registry births and so on and so on. Here on this map, you can see a lot of pins or needles and every pin stands for a church book or a civil registry document, which is indexed fully or partially. So, and I think everybody knows what a person database is. So I want to start with a practical example. Um, I choose an example from Facebook and it's a typical questions, uh, question here. Um, David is looking for Margarete Dramburg from Pomerania. 
she was born between 90 and 9010 and her mother was Berta Lassine. So hmm, we remember we have uh, more than 800 civil registry offices, uh, more than 1,100 parishes, and in 1939 there were, were more than 2.5 uh, 4 million inhabitants. So where to start to look after these uh, Margarete Dramburg? So without a person database, it's impossible to find this person without more information. So, but now I will show you what you can do with our person database. So let's switch to our main page. You will find these, oh, I take here English. So you find it research. On the top is our Quellen Datenbank and the point under it, it's the person database. So, and here on the top, you find an English user guide, some information about the data. And you can see here details of the content and so on. I will show that later on. And now it starts with some uh, fields where you can put in parameters. So this is a, a field for, for the names. You can type in here family names or family names of the partner. Here are some more uh, options I will show you later. So, and we'll try to find uh, Margarete Dramburg uh, and her mother was Berta Lossin. So we type in here Dramburg, type in here Lossin and click on search. So, and we can see here that there are two uh, search results in the civil registry of Basel uh, in the district of Schlawe. So, and we look here, Margarete Dramburg, the mother was Lossin. So, and if we click on this link here, there is an a detail overview about this indexed record. And we see, okay, in this uh, civil registry office, uh, number 12, there was a child born, Margarete Else Adeline Dramburg, and the father was Adolf Dramburg, the mother, Berta Lossin. So, and a link to uh, the digitized or, or to the resource where you can find these uh, documents. So I will show you. We have to log in, of course. And now I have this not in mind. This is Basil. So here, Basil. And the picture was uh, number 47. So, and some seconds later, we have the birth certificate of Margarete Else Adeline Dramburg. So, you can see uh, you only need one minute or two minutes to find the original records which are digitized in the internet, uh, possible with this database. So if we can see here, so before we develop this database, it's impossible to find this person in Pomerania. So with this database, we only need one or two minutes to have the original record here. So then I have uh, second example, it's a question, a question of Mary Warnock. He's looking for the family portraits and uh, Martin Potratz was married to Friederike Klug. So I will show you uh, how to, no, sorry. <clears throat> so family name. Portraits. The partner was family name Klug. 
so. And now first we want to search for baptism or bo uh, birth records. So I'll search here. Then I got a list and you see, oh, sorry. I have to switch in the original language because he translating the names too. That's not very good. So um, now we have two results of this family. So we can have a look. So there we found two additional childs of this family. And we have here the link to the church book. Okay, sorry. Okay, there's an error at the moment. Okay. So you can see that you can use a name combination if you are looking for uh, married couples. So I'll show you how to search for a baptism. And if you are looking for the marriage of this couple, you have to change this option here. <clears throat> so no, we don't find in a marriage of this couple. So, okay. So there are a lot of options here uh, in the, in the uh, Rife index. So please use this user guide to uh, uh, know all these uh, different options. So I think it's not good to explain it today in detail, but uh, yeah, you have a lot of uh, search possibilities here with this uh, Grife index. <clears throat> so now I have to end. I will start again. We can reset here. So I have to see my examples. So if there are any questions at the moment, please feel free to ask. So when you want to ask, then please unmute your microphone. Klaus, I have a question. You had just written in the chat that support is welcome. Is that something that people can do from around the world, from their, you know, from their home office or their couch? Yes, a anyone doing research uh, on family search or elsewhere uh, could easily uh, use their time to also generate an index. It's my uh, personal experience that uh, by the second time you search through one of the uh, films on, on family search, uh, you are already saving time if you if you generate an index the first time round. It takes a little longer the first time, but it pays off. And if you use one of our templates for births, uh, marriages, or, or uh, deaths, then uh, we can fill the uh, into our database and you can, everybody else can benefit as well. Annette has a question. Annette? Yeah, um, I'd like to index and I'm going to move this over. I'd like very much to index, but how large are the batches? How long do they take? Um, how do you send them? I was under the impression that they come through Dropbox um, there are different approaches, Annette. Uh, if the records are not uh, public, if they're not uh, available on an open website, then we have to find a way of getting them to you. But there are loads of records that are available on Family Search or elsewhere and haven't been indexed yet, so you could work on those as well. Is it possible for you to show on Family Search, like, okay, so may I share my screen? Yeah, of course. So I stop. So if I am sharing my screen now, right? Yeah. So let's say I go into family search and I want to index, I would probably go into 
indexing. Would I go into find a project? And then would I click on Europe and to Germany? Clearly I've been here before. <laughs> and, then, and then see, this is the list of what I get. So where would I go now? To, so here I have partially searchable. Stop, stop. Um, I think we're crossing uh, here. The, the, we're not using the family search indexing function. We're just using the digital images on family search and putting the indexing results into an Excel table that you then send to Danilo and he will put it into the database. Okay, so what is an area, for example, that has not been researched or not indexed? Um, off the top of my head, there's a lot in uh, Western uh, Pomerania that still needs indexing where records are available but haven't been uh, processed yet. Okay, can you give me a, a, a name just so I can take a look real quick? Uh, County of Naugard, for example. Sag es noch mal. Naugard. Naugard. N-A-U-G-A-R-D. There, there you are. This will give me something to do. <laughs> So unfortunately, I'm seeing only that we have maps for that area. Let me... And now that is, is the county, so you need one of the parishes. There's the whole list of parishes. Gross Benz, for example. Uh, Let's try that one. Yeah, they have not been indexed. So basically, I would just go into this and pick a record and start indexing it based on a form that you send to us. Yeah. Yeah. You found these uh, uh, templates at the end of the start page of the uh, Grive index. Okay. Start. So I will I will square my sh share my screen. So here at the end of this page you find information if you are interested in helping us. So there's an email address for the coordinator and you find here the templates of the Excel files you have to use for the index work. So, and in our Quellensuche, if you are looking for a church book and in our Quellensuche, there is no link to the Grife index, you know, there is no index work uh, ready. So uh, maybe he's in work, but uh, you can ask our coordinator and he can give you some work if you are interested in. It, it looks like you have a list under Projekt Informationen. Yes, we can have a look here. The details of content. So one moment. So and we have here a whole list of the indexed Uh, church books and civil registry documents. And if you don't find your church book here in this list, it's very likely that it's not indexed at the moment. So if you are interested in helping, so please contact the coordinator, say uh, in which uh, places you are interested in, in which districts, and he can have a look into his working list and give you some work. So if you are an uh, expert in indexing, he can give you 10, 20, or 30 years of church books. If you are not uh, <laughs> experienced in that, you can take one year or two years. It's no problem. So that's why it's very good to contact our coordinator. So, and we, we have a map where you can see where index work is existing. So you can use this map here. And if you click on one marker, you see, okay, registry office Schlenzig and uh, the deaths of 1926 to 1938 are indexed at the moment. So it's a possibility to see what is in the database. 
So, and you, you can see here in Western Pomerania, there's, yeah, there are some church books I'm missing and here too. There are more questions. Danilo, there was a, a question in the chat. And when you're using crowdsourcing to index, um, how do you guarantee correct entries? Or is that not something that you are really um, we've thought about that nancy uh, and it is way beyond our means to have um, multiple indexing and and uh, correction and and uh, things like that the, the process would be far too complicated and uh, waste a lot of time and energy was our uh, conclusion and so we're taking the risk that there's an occasional mistake in, in the table and we accept uh, corrections if somebody comes across one of those mistakes uh, because it's our belief that an incomplete or slightly incorrect index is a lot better than none at all. Hello, this is Elda. Um, Hi, Vivi sent me a list of name, the name Halfpap in a town called Kuso in Christolp. Um, from the database, and I, it didn't have links to scans like the examples that you showed there. It was just a list of names and dates, and you know the parents' names if it was applicable. Um, and I wasn't sure: are those things that you members have personally saved databases or saved uh, scans of that I would request? Or I wasn't sure how to proceed with that list. Uh, who sent this list? Uh, UV? It sounds like from Uwe Kerntop. Yes. Yeah. So it's probably from his database rather than this one. Can it be? I, I think Uwe is here today. Okay. Uwe, are you there? Yes. Hello. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. After the last meeting, I had posted a question or asked a question about um, looking for my great great grandfather. August Halfpap. I knew he had died in um, Jadenspiegen, Austria, but I was looking for the Halfpap name in his birth town, Kuso, in Kreisstolp, and you sent me a um, like a chart, a database list of Halfpaps from that region. Um, but it, it's not like the example that was just shown here where you look in the personal database and find a list that has a link to an actual scan and goes directly to that scan. It was just a list with information and I wanted to request a couple of those, but I just didn't know how to go about that. Okay, uh, first thing is um, parts of our index works are also included in the GraphX database, uh, especially for those uh, records and scans uh, the Pomerscher Greif has provided to us, but uh, uh, our association is doing that for now more than 20 years. So we have started uh, earlier with some records where nobody should know that we have these records available. So okay. where, where it's not clear that we have copies of them. So uh, there are a lot of sources you do not find in the internet, so we cannot make a link in the internet to, to the record, but we are having this record as a paper copy or as a digital copy. Okay. And uh, when you know our global index, our database, it's online also on our website at stolp.de. There's a procedure how you can gather more information about the record you found in the global, okay. in the global index. So I, I do subscribe to the Stolpel yes. list, mm -hmm. um, and I see people requesting scans. So that's that's what you're talking about. It would be something like that, where I something like that, because yeah. we had a lot of coworkers, and one of them will 
be able to help you with your request then. Okay, thank you. May I ask a question? Yes, you can. This is Charlotte Olson from Wisconsin in the US. My ancestors, um, Kurf and Kloon, K-L-O-E-H-N, came from Kambis, a gut, an estate in Christ Kameen. The church was in Stukau, which was a daughter church for the main church in Greifenberg. And I, I'm stuck whether I look in Christ Kameen churches or Christ Greifenberg to find the Evangelische records. Um, if you use the uh, source search, uh, you could just enter Stucho, which Daniel is now doing, and he will get you to the right place. Unfortunately, in uh, Christ Kameen, uh, a lot of the records are lost. So uh, the chances of finding something, unless it's in Christ Greifenberg, where the situation was better, are small. But we'll see here what, what Danilo has to offer. Yeah, so I type in Stucho and you see the registry docu uh, office documents are lost and uh, there's only uh, a duplicate of the church book of Wittenfeld is online. So, but we see it's online and you can have a look on the website of the state I have in Stettin and you see here it's a duplicate of Wittenfelde. Wonderful, thank you. And I think it is in our, uh, so it's indexed and, and in our person database, the marriage. Yeah. Danilo, vielleicht solltest du noch mal einen Link zeigen, speziell zu den Ansprechpartnern. Okay. Karen mentioned I should show a link to our Uh, contact persons, you will find the contact persons for the dif uh, different districts. Uh, so, sorry, I have to switch to German here um, because. So, so there's a link. I put it in the chat. Uh, so, and we have here a list of our contact persons for the uh, districts. And if you are looking for ancestors in these districts, you can contact these persons here in this list. I will. Do you mind showing us how you got there? How did you get to this page? Sorry, one moment. So I, the link is in the chat. So, and this is our start. And here, Verein, Association. And here, the fourth. And you can find the contact persons, Ansprechpartner in German. So, or you look in the chat. So, but if you are using the Quellensuche and you are looking for a place at the end of all overview sites, you will find the contact person for this uh, uh, district. One more question. I see on the Pomerischer Greif main page, there's login. Is it necessary to register with the Pomerischer Greif organization? No, all these information I'll show you today, it's free accessible. The login button is only for our members where they can find some additional uh, information. Thank you. Danila, do you want to mention um, what membership might cost people and what's in, included in it? So maybe Klaus, do you want to do this point? Yes, I, I can do that. Uh, let me just share my screen. Um, that's the slide I showed last time. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization in, in Germany. Um, so you can donate to us and we'll give you, a, a, in Germany at least, you can deduct it from your taxes. Um, 
membership fee is 40 euros per year. Um, if you're living abroad from Germany, it's 50 because shipment of our uh, publications is rather expensive to uh, the United States in particular. Um, what you get for membership, you get four issues a year of our uh, magazine, the Dina Archiv, um, 30 to 50 pages, depending on how much uh, input we get uh, of genealogical uh, information, of uh, general information and membership or, uh, information. If we publish uh, special issues, which we have done for many years in the past, you get a free copy uh, as a gift. You can become a member of our mailing list, uh, which is a closed list only for members of the Greif itself or partner organizations. We have a library and an archive in uh, Suso uh, near Greifswald where you can have access. Uh, it's also available for uh, non-members, but uh, members have special conditions. And uh, you can make use of all our facilities um, like anyone else. And you can uh, attend our seminars and our excursions at uh, discount prices. We have a homepage, a blog, and a forum and an email newsletter on our mailing list uh, to members summarizing anything related to Pomerania, uh, past and present, um, as, as a reference and announcements for meetings, etc. And we're present on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Daniel knows better than I uh, what exactly we provide on Facebook and on Twitter. But those are the things that uh, you can uh, take advantage of as a member. Um, we don't publish electronically up to now. We've uh, had several discussions about that issue. But, okay. Uh, the majority of our members prefer uh, the haptics of a, a paper uh, publication uh, and uh, only old uh, versions of our um, of our publications um, we, we have scanned and uh, archived in the membership area so uh, if you want access to one of those we, we can uh, probably help you. Yeah, yeah some of the publications of other uh, groups in, in the United States have switched over to electronic versions so I it was a, it's a way to save money and I just wondered if you folks did that too but okay. Not a problem. We've, we've had several discussions and so far we've decided against it. Okay. And there is, there is a question from Wilbur. He said, where can I locate records for immigration records? Einwandereraufzeichnungen, immigration records. Are you, Wilbur, are you talking about records here in the United States for these things or are you talking about them in Germany specifically? Uh, uh, the records are in uh, Poland. What I want to know where they're located at. Uh, see, uh, my family, uh, Tarboro, where they're, uh, most of them are living in, in that general area. Are they in uh, where they're located? In Ads or in Poland? Or are they in some other archives and also in Germany? So uh, I've been told that they're kind of scattered around. I'd don't know where they're at located. That's what I'm trying to find out. Where they're um, all located at. Just as a by just for me to know, have you checked the Family Search Research Wiki on Poland genealogy and German genealogy? No, not not yet. Because there is an overview there where they've tried to provide a lot of different links for areas that you can research. Um, for specifically those topics that you put into the chat book. And I would check there because every area, every province or region within Germany or Poland will have different areas. So I would, I would check there first. I'll put the link into the box for you and anyone else who knows more should, could provide okay, that. I, I would appreciate it. I know those are key ones to uh, look for uh, records. That's what I, I have uh, got out of several different books up I read and I uh, have a, uh, correspond with several people and uh, no one could ever never give me an answer. One of the reasons that 
uh, makes your uh, question difficult to answer is there are no um, emigration records from Pomerania in Pomerania because people uh, didn't sign out when they left. They, they disappeared or they fled uh, or it was not organized. You may find them in uh, departure records in Hamburg or in Bremerhaven or in arrival records in Ellis Island or elsewhere, but there's no systematic um, tracking of emigrants from Pomerania in, in the area itself. Yeah, so, on, on the immigration uh, stuff, I found a passenger ship that I found part of the family. There are several uh, families uh, on my great-grandparents -grand and also my great-great-grandparents uh, have all come together at the same time within a year apart. And I found part of them, but I can't find the rest of them. And that's what I'm trying to locate the rest of the records, everything. Where they're, lo where they're located uh, primarily today is close to Weeby, L-E-B-A, uh, Poland today. Same thing as uh, close there is Carpo. Uh, in that whole area right there is where the family from. So that's what I'm trying to find out. I have a hard, more difficult trying to get information. Mm. You may want to write the uh, names and places in, into the chat, then we can uh, see if there's anything we can find out afterwards. But uh, like I said, it's uh, not guaranteed. Okay, you want the surname or you want the first name and last name both? Uh, both would be uh, useful, and and the place names. Okay, all right, uh, we can do that. <clears throat> and that, uh, you're welcome if you want to uh, shed some light on this issue. Shall and please we... type in your email address as well. Okay, I can do that. I can type my email in there. So, Wilbur. Yes. Um, just take a look at your screen for just a moment. So this is Family Search, and they have Family Search has on their research wiki about 240 countries. And what they do is they they break it down by country, and in this case, it would be German genealogy. But I'm just going to show you kind of a quick overview. You have these little boxes here that you can click on. Right. You know your different records that these are quick links. But what you really want to pay attention to is that list of things that you provided in the chat books. You can actually find them here. So if you oh, want okay. to find naturalization and citizenship or military records, you could go and click on one of these things. Let's say military records. Now, okay, my great grandfather, he served three different wars in uh, Pomerania. Here's the challenge though. In America, records are kept differently than they were in Germany. And so it's gonna be hit and miss depending on the area that you go to. So, so these are just, this is just an overview for you to see what's available. So if you were to click, for example, on, oh, I want to, you, I want to know you've got customs, gazetteers, you have handwriting, geography, and you have okay. you know, naturalization. So if I click on naturalization and citizenship, I'm going to see a brief blurb on, on what kind of information is available, but this is okay. like to guide for what you want to look for but if for example so we brought up Hamburg earlier Hamburg has excellent um, ship passenger lists if you wanted to right. know more than that you would see it already automatically populates it with a variety of information from Hamburg in this case I just want the passenger lists I enter it in and now I can see what's available and where it is. And if it's blue, it's a hyperlink and it'll take you straight to that source. But okay. if, if you want, you can go by the area that your people came from. So let's see, I want to do Pomeran or Pomerania. Click here in the right hand corner. Now I'm just going to be looking at in, in the records for the German Empire genealogy. This is for Prussia. And now everything that has to do with Prussia and Pomerania is going to be found here, including maps that are clickable, and you'll have more information of the types of records that are available, 
and you'll have a nice map that's helpful that kind of gives you an overview. Okay, so these are just. Oh, okay, good deal. I uh, see the family from uh, far eastern uh, Pomeranian. Uh, some have moved back and forth from West Russia, uh, County uh, Neustrad or something like that, and back over. They move back and forth. I don't know why. I have not figured that one out. They moved a lot. <laughs> so I think it all depends on uh, uh, if it's, you know, out of culture, you know, farming the drought, the rain, and all that sort of stuff. I don't know. Or it could be military problems. I know the family uh, served in the military for a long time before they come to the United States. I would definitely check that site first and take a look around. I will do that. I will do that. I'll put my email in and I'll just put the surnames in. And if you have, and uh, where are they all from? You know, the county and so forth. To have a general idea. While we're waiting for more questions, I have um, another one that I prepared earlier. If I may share my screen. Oh. We had in advance uh, a question about Ahnenpass and Aria Nachweis, um, which some of you may know, others may not. So I prepared a little um, explanation for that. Um, oops. This is what it may have looked like inside uh, there was a template and it was an official record uh, and contained a lot of information about uh, a person's ancestry uh, to document their heritage uh, and, and um, it was used in Nazi Germany between 1933 and 1945 to prove pure Germanic ancestry. Um, there were different levels of uh, Aria Nachweis, and it depended on your uh, position, which uh, one of these you had to provide. Not everyone had to provide uh, a, a pass, an Aria Nachweis. Uh, the small one, so-called small one, just went two generations, parents and grandparents completed, and the large one had to go back all the way to 1800 or even further for some senior officials and not just for the person him or herself but also for the spouse all the entries had to be certified by the authorities by the church or by the uh, registrar's office uh, that's why you saw on the previous page all those stamps uh, with the nazi symbol um, over time, quite a bureaucracy developed. Uh, there were various laws that uh, regulated the, the rules, what you had to provide and, and how, who had to provide it. And there were official uh, institutions uh, regulating this and, and uh, handling this. The Reichszippenamt uh, was the most well-known uh, organization there. Um, while it was quite helpful for family research, it also provided uh, the basis for prosecution of citizens, which could not prove that they were pure, that none of their paternal or maternal ancestors had Jewish or colored blood. So that was the downside of this whole thing. And here are two references where you can find a lot of information. Um, the links are to a German page, but you can switch them to English and um, read up if you're interested. Um, so how does that um, help us as a family researcher? Of course, uh, it can provide a good starting point for your family research because it documents two or three or more generations uh, 
as a starting point for your research, which will bring you back uh, outside of the protection periods of, of uh, data protection. Um, even today, they're considered legal documents because they have been certified. Uh, but you have to be aware they are secondary sources and they can contain errors um, for obvious reasons. Uh, but also there are cases known where they were slightly inaccurate to protect uh, the innocent, so to speak. So um, not everything is really uh, necessarily true. Whether you will find them is uh, just lucky or chance because uh, there's no systematic uh, availability of these records. As I said, not everyone had to take them, had had to provide them. There's no central archive or systematic repository where they were uh, documented, the content of these records. In some cases, uh, material is uh, in the Bundesarchiv, link is, is given here. Uh, but those are typically records of Nazi officials uh, because they had their own administration and, and some of the material uh, collected was maintained then and survived. Uh, but others were destroyed because of all the Nazi stamps. Uh, they may have been considered as, as risky after uh, the Russian or the American uh, troops came in. So people may have destroyed them themselves. There's an interesting website uh, link given here of private collections. Today you can find them by the dozen on eBay or, or elsewhere. Uh, empty ones as examples, but even uh, Arnen Pass or Aria Nachweis filled out with personal data uh, for a few uh, euros or a few more. You can buy them on eBay, and this guy, Daniel Kuss, collects them and puts them online. I'll show you the, the, the page in a moment. But it may be interesting to ask around in the family you have, if you haven't already, especially close relatives. Um, your uncles will have a, a large overlap with your ancestry, so they can be quite useful. And the page I was talking about, Delibra, uh, gives reference to hundreds of Arnenpass or Arya Nachweis that this guy has collected and uh, he accepts input. So if you have one uh, that your family is happy to share, send him a scan of, of the passport and he will add it to the list so that other researchers can uh, benefit from the information on, on this pass. And his page also switches to English, so uh, should be should be useful. There's not a single location that's guaranteed to have everything you're looking for. There are three different kinds of uh, sources that you may want to look at. Um, one is the military archive itself, which is today a section of the Federal Archive. It's located in Freiburg. I'll put the link uh, in, into the chat in a moment. Thank you. Um, but as I said, not everything survived the war, so you may not be fortunate to find anything. Then sure. there's uh, the uh, VAST, W-A-S-T, uh, especially for the Second World War. They hold records for people uh, that died, military uh, personnel that died in the Second World War. Um, and they are also, those records are today also in the uh, Bundesarchiv, the Federal Archive. Um, and for times further back, there are uh, the Verlustlisten, the, the loss lists of the First World War, which have been indexed uh, by a, a project here in Germany of, of uh, computer genealogists and can be searched uh, online. 
Um, and there are military church books as well, but there's not a single systematic location where all the uh, military church books uh, are uh, documented. So um, it's, again, a little tricky to find for which period um, church, military church books existed in which city and where to find them. As I wrote in the chat, I have some handwritten scraps of paper that belong to my great grandfather and his wife. They lived, came from Christ Stolp. Um, these pieces of paper were written by their pastors with a stamp from the church, giving their birth names, baptism, or birth date and place, baptism, parents' names. And they were something they looked like they had carried. They were folded up and much worn. <laughs> and my mother had them. And I assume they brought these to America as proof of their birth, but I don't know if anybody could comment on that. Is that something, you know, like in lieu of a passport or a birth certificate, they just had the pastor write this on a scrap of paper? Probably. Uh, in, in those days, people didn't necessarily have any kind of official passport, uh, especially if, if they left without asking for permission. Uh, they wouldn't have been given a passport or a passport uh, replacement. And, and that was their only way of, of documenting their identity. Okay. I was just curious because I, you know, it's just a personal piece of paper that was handed down through the family and I've never heard or seen anything like it, so. Right. Is that something that uh, was presented to their church when they came yeah. to a new church as a, a means of identifying yeah. them? Oh, and, uh, membership in, in the church. Okay. I've yes. learned from Quite anecdotal cool. sources that before you could get married, your United States pastor would want proof that you were a confirmed Lutheran and they would use those documents also to become a member of a church. They wanted to make sure you were a baptized person. So I have heard of that. I haven't seen any documents, but I've heard where they were useful in even Gaelish or parishes. Okay, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, I mean, that's there still the case to today. Talk. That's still the case today that you have to uh, document your membership of the church if, if you want to uh, be married or, or buried, <clears throat> whatever uh, official act they have to perform. And in, in those days, the only place you didn't have to produce them is in your home parish because there the pastor could look it up in, in the uh, church books himself. If you went somewhere else, you had to provide a uh, certification. Okay, thank you. Uh, the Lutheran Church is south of uh, an airport in the Chicago there. I forgot the name of the church there. That they have all that information in one of their indexes in their church books. Yeah. It's right south of the uh, International Airport. Uh, I can't remember the name of the church right there. The person we, family we were looking for uh, indicated that uh, they were in uh, Christ Brisbane, um, but the family apparently was Alt Lutheraner. Herr Wolf indicated that the, uh, the congregations of those churches kept separate church books from the That's state correct. church. That's correct. Uh, they had uh, a lot fewer churches, and in some cases they, they shared the building but had ch separate church books. So my grandparents were uh, old Lutheran as well, and they had to walk quite a distance to attend service in, in the uh, old Lutheran church uh, because that was much further away than the regular uh, Protestant church. Did any of those church books survive in any form? Yes. Um, in the county that I uh, uh, represent, uh, we had about half a dozen of them and at least five of them survived. But in, in the neighboring county in, in Kameen, uh, not uh, many of them uh, survived at all, the regular northern old Lutheran one. So it was very 
uh, much chance. Yes. Whether you'd Thank be you. lucky to find some or not. But as, as Karin uh, wrote into the chat, um, in around 1850, the old Lutherans had a very difficult time in Pomerania because uh, the uh, state and the um, regular church were, were trying to force them into joining and they didn't want to uh, join and many of them emigrated to the US and there's uh, a publication about this uh, giving names and, and from where they came and where they went. So uh, that's uh, an interesting, interesting uh, period of, of history. Thank you. Well, so are those records also then linked in your uh, Quellensuche? They're linked in the Quellensuche for sure. And if they've been indexed, they're also part of the uh, Greif X. I think it's about time to, to um, announce the next uh, connection session for Pomerania uh, before everyone leaves. Um, I've been after the last one, the first one, um, I was under the impression that it would be useful to uh, talk a little bit about what constituted Pomerania at which point in time. And I've started to prepare uh, a presentation on a thousand years of Pomerania, which will be the starting point for our third uh, Pomeranian connection session. And that will take place on March 27th, which again is a Saturday uh, at 7 p.m. our time here in Germany. We will send around uh, information well in advance and uh, you're happy, uh, you're, you're welcome to join us and we hope that you find the information useful that we'll be preparing. It's a way, a way uh, in, into the future, but that's because uh, end of January, I will be hosting the uh, Schleswig-Holstein connection session and uh, it takes some time to prepare all this. Yeah, to those who want to leave now, we say goodbye from Germany. See you to the next Pommern connection session or maybe to the Schleswig-Holstein connection session. And we wish you a wonderful Christmas time and a happy new year. And we want to invite all the others to our virtual connection cafe, meaning that this Zoom meeting room will be will remain open for more questions, talks, discussions, and connections. So thank you so very much, Georg, and especially Klaus and Danilo. I really appreciate you connecting us. You're welcome.